Hi guys, so I thought I would do a video today on basically improving uh, the what is the idea and design behind uh, beginner's drawing and just to also take us through this beginner's drawing and, and see what's going on. So this is the first level of drawing which is uh, being capable of drawing symbols. So as you can see he's capable of drawing uh, like little stars, like, well, those little stars or whatever, <laughs> which is better than me. Um, so he's capable of drawing those little stars, little hexagon and so on. And then he's drawn like half a circle here well. And then as it's like transitioning into him having to control it more or change it more, it's, it's sort of spiraling out of control, which is totally normal. Uh, I don't know why my tablet is so weird today, but uh, okay, cool. Um, so uh, a circle like that, like a big circle, is probably going to be pretty difficult. If you're going to use your wrist, it's going to be much simpler to, to draw a circle. But if you're drawing a circle with your, mm, with your shoulder blades, I mean, half a circle is super easy. But by the time you get to like the full circle, it's it's actually kind of difficult. Um, like you'd have to just sit with a few different pieces of paper to to get that. I think. Whoa, like that's legit difficult. I don't think that's very easy to do. So there's no fault at creating this circle that he's done um, because you've got to know exactly kind of the circle size that you can draw for that muscle structure of like how you how you're creating that stroke because you're going to have small circles which are created by the wrist and then this larger circle that's created by the shoulder blade. Uh, movement is going to be much trickier. So yeah, you're always going to be able to get half that circle really easily, but that other that other part is going to be difficult because your muscle is going to transition. Okay, so there's that which we can see um, right on with uh, with that circle, and you can obviously just use tools to get like perfect circles and things like that, or uh, sketch with pencil first so that you can kind of darken darken with each sweep and maybe even add like a, a texture or something that makes it look so it doesn't have to be just a single a single line um, and maybe even add that into like the design so uh, you could make it look like more of a coiled ring or something and that inaccuracy can become uh, a feature or a design idea that's connected to it. Okay, so what he's done really, really well here is I think the proportions of this design is actually really good. Um, and he did mention that he was using site size. He was attempting to use site size to do it, which means comparing it in his mind and then like looking at the reference, then looking at what he's drawing, looking at the reference, looking at what he's drawing, which is really difficult to do, especially if you're just beginning. So he's done like a really awesome job here in uh, pulling that off. Uh, so a simple, simple tip for any beginner is to actually use a pencil for anything that's sort of more practicey, um, especially for like the measurement parts of things. And another tip might be to use red or blue, um, just because they're less, less, less dark colors. So, and so that when you go over them later, you can uh, remove that from your mental image uh, much easier. So here, um, let's say design-wise, if we look at this, we can see that there is a main angle to this drawing. 
Hmm. I don't know why that brush, that pencil looks so weak. All right. So there's a main angle to this drawing. Uh, it sort of comes out and breaks this circle. That's part of the design. Um, and potentially the second idea is that it breaks a line up here. So typically when I'd look at a drawing or something like that, you just look for what the main ideas are um, so that you capture those first. Here we can see there's a volume of this body and the volume of this wing. And what's this? This is like, this is bigger than this. And then this is going to be smaller, right? So this is the biggest part. Um, so you can just kind of like take that there's going to be a big part here or something like that. You don't have to be super exact. And then say with this part, there's uh, curves that come through along this way. So, and the tail comes through this way. So what I'm using here is I'm using strokes for this one. They're all sort of similar rhythmic strokes and strokes for this one, right? And I'm just kind of capturing the same sort of height and size. So this is just like this chin here is just above the midpoint. And so sort of create this beak and uh, it sort of comes back and sort of kicks into, right? So it kicks back in. And then there's this curve up that happens here. And then it sweeps, sweeps up into the wings. Now we'll see if this design is actually true to his reference, but this is the idea of his design, which I actually think is kind of nice. So like, I like that design. It's kind of interesting. It's almost like a hummingbird. Um, and if we, there's a part under the wing that curves this way, that then goes into the tail out this way. Um, and then maybe it potentially like kicks back this way while this one kicks down this way and this one kicks out this way. Okay, so we've got like these multiple rhythm lines, which I, I really like this and into sort of this and this and some of these come over, but this, this crosses back. That's disorganized, but it's interesting. Okay, so, and then we've got something that's sort of coming at this angle from here, which then turns and turns up. And so I'm just kind of trying to stay true to the, the des original design here. I'm sort of breaking it a little bit maybe by coming too far out of that too far out of the circle. Um, I mean, there's a lot of interpretation that can be done here to sort of change it. And what you'll just notice is instead of using one pass, uh, I'm cheating here and doing something which he didn't do, which is uh, going going over it with pencils and then just trying to see like how I want to do those lines and how I would want to do uh, the specific strokes of those lines. Um, so then we get to this point where at least some part of this design starts to like to become more apparent. Um, so this, this coming it's coming over 
and under like this. Mm. So this tail is kind of a little bit of a problem. Just trying to think of how you can make that tail more lively because this comes down and up. Maybe like it needs to curve. Like there needs to be a steeper curve there. Uh, the reason I say that is because in real world physics, you have this kind of pattern that happens often. And this kind of pattern is uh, a, a torsion wave. So a torsion wave is like something that's spinning as it's, um, as it's got like a wave going through it. So <clears throat> as it twists around, you'll get this kind of like bell curve, which then will like kick up into like a whatever. So this is kind of like a constant pattern that happens in like nature. Um, that's just something I know from, I don't know, observation in uh, martial arts and things like that. Okay, so this is just a symbol. So all we need is stroke, stroke patterns. We don't need to think about anything too drastic, like what is the actual form here? Like, oh, I'm going to create a form. I'm going to create a this or that. So we'll just keep it as a simple silhouette. And we'll also think about the symbolism here. So the symbolism here is there's different numbers of stars. Uh, they're sort of differently organized. So could there be a way to organize those stars in a different way? Um, he's sort of doing this differing pattern. Um, so part of me thinks that either we can apply something here to the heart portion of it, or we can make these evenly spaced. But of course, this wing is interrupting it. So how would you do that? Also, this phoenix is bigger. So I need to actually make this bigger to be truer to the design. Um, it has more heft and meat here as well. So I'll just make that adjustment. Um, there's like a rhythm line that goes through here. All right, cool. That's a bit truer to his design. Um, there's also this angular thing at the back of the head. It's not just a, a hook, a, a sort of bell curve thing. And as you can see, that part of the design is also adding that, adding that sort of strength. I also find it interesting to have a line across here that is showing that the wing is like the neck is behind the wing. So you get this, you're basically getting this T curve here and you're showing that this is behind, which is interesting. Okay. So here, here. So we end up having that design and then Mm, what's what's happening with these feet? These are weird feet, but let's just think about these feet in a design way and say, okay, so there's a there's like a stem of the foot, and there's something coming over, and then there's another thing coming over, and then there's something coming under, and something coming under. So even if these things like you can just make them a little bit more even or a little bit more of a silhouette like like that maybe and maybe that'll make it look a little bit more uh, like there's more symmetry so legs will attach around here just just thinking of like an actual bird the the leg portion is going to be here and then the 
thing is going to come off here. So just using a bit of knowledge, you can just say around here is probably where the leg's going to come off and say this one's going to come off here. This one might come off here. So you might make a little planning mark and then just say, OK, cool. And so this one comes across here and then there's like a maybe it's even easier here to just I was just thinking to not even create such a complex pattern just to simplify it, but it doesn't really work. Uh, so then add another element, see if that makes it work. Mm, maybe. Add that. No, doesn't really work. Um, add this part of the pattern. Does that work? Meh. No, not really. What about this one? Mm. And then add the final sort of talon. Does that work? Yeah, it kind of works actually. It's good enough. Um, so with this one, there's just a bit more symmetry and maybe this this front leg should actually be bigger because it it's in the front and that's actually in his design. So I'm going to add it in. And there's like a third talon and a fourth talon that comes across. So something that ugh. <laughs> okay uh, something that's cool about like even beginning drawings is that you can create uh, a design that's interesting whoa that does not look right and Part of it is just taking apart little pieces of whatever your design is and then just breaking that down into little sub designs and trying to figure out like if you got that right or not. Um, and let's just say that's close enough. It looks like it's legs broken, but <laughs> I don't know what I'm going off here. I can use some logic if I want to but I think it's fine. So there's also texture. Maybe that's trying to be represented here with this fur, but I can assume that's probably fire. So let's actually change this and say like, okay, well, we're gonna create some fire. So some fire might be something like this and like this and maybe like, flames coming off like this like that uh, and hmm I wonder if like a flame would go up here maybe Okay, so I've kind of decided not to do flames on that part. Um, are these flames? It's hard to say. Um, maybe just add in like some grooves or something that might showcase like feathers or whatever, and then have that have a flamey texture. All right. Like if you want, but you wouldn't need anything like that, but 
because you could just make it a simpler design where you just have it be a silhouette. And I think that would be cool. Um, and put some grooves along this one as well. I'm just going to make these tail feathers kind of longer and more connected. Uh, and maybe on the back side of these wings, you can have like, you could even have like little bits of flame to break, break up the lines a little bit. Like just to change the symmetry, it'll just add a bit more interest sometimes, is when you put a little bit of asymmetry in something that's highly symmetrical. Maybe this is actually like a flame up here. It's just like an opportunity to put like a little flamey lick across there. Um, maybe this is kind of good here and that's kind of... Maybe having like a straight top down here is, no, I don't think that really makes it better. Maybe a longer beak. <sighs> kind of destroying it. Okay. I think you yeah, have thoroughly destroyed it somehow. Okay, and um, then add something. So these stars, how would you add like stars to this kind of thing? Mm. If you want to add stars as a theme, you like off here, you kind of can't see them or you don't see them initially. So the focal point of the drawing is here. So here's just a random idea is just bringing a star behind the focal point so and make it break the break the circle there um, it's just random I don't know if it'll work but it just makes the idea of the stars more prominent so that you can then see it it's just a random design idea, but maybe it competes too much with the main idea of the drawing, so probably probably not a great idea. Mm. And maybe there's like a single star here. And there's two stars here. And then there's three stars here. I never draw stars like this. It's challenging for me. <laughs> okay, cool. Three stars here. Um, and so you have stuff like that. 
maybe, and I'm obviously missing the other stars. So this comes behind, this comes to there, which then means the stars are here. I'm just seeing if I can get away with that. I might not. Hmm, maybe. Maybe there's ways to position it so that that works. And there would be stars here. So maybe this, we could make this into four. We could play with this so that this one turns into like it's it in itself is like the the four stars or something up this maybe bring this over here So you'll just notice that there's more decisions going into things than is like the initial design, but it's you're just creating this the same sort of idea. You just adding different aspects to it. And this kind of thing, like, it shouldn't be too out of reach, but it should be kind of very difficult for you to do early on because you're not going to be as fit or have as much access to different pieces of information that can help you do things. So you're not going to think, oh, but I could do this here and I could do that there. You're not going to have access to that. You're going to have access to some of that, but not like tons of it. So, so for example, here, I've just kind of made those longer tail feathers. I'll make these longer, longer wing feathers. And I'm wondering if there's anything that can be done to make this look even stronger. Personally, I'd just remove those legs. It's a simple design anyway. But unless you actually want the legs for like some sort of emotional expression and maybe like bring them forwards so that it's like a landing posture. And when things land, it's kind of like the front portion is down and then 
the back portion is up. Okay, so this would be down, but then this would be up. And that, maybe even up more. So I'm just trying to think of like a way to stylize these these talons, just to make them simple simple enough that they're not going to interfere with the rest of everything. And see, this front one doesn't have like a motion in it, so I'm going to change that. I'm actually just going to copy the, the first one a bit. Nope. Let's make it steeper. Uh, da, 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 da. Up. And now you have like the main idea here, um, sort of re represented, and then you would just go into specifically how you want it, how you want it to appear or look in the, the final idea whether you want to use color or whether you want to use like a simple silhouette. Um, so let's try something like orange and gold because it's a phoenix, right? And there's stars. So Origin goal should be okay. I haven't studied color theory, so it's going to be a bit, bit off. Hmm. Um. Or really off. <laughs> um. I'll just, I'll just get an idea. I think like a darker red would would work. As well. So where's a darker red? Um make these smaller. Yeah, and maybe maybe not on its face, but on this back side maybe. And where's this gold? Okay, so put some gold. 
That looks like green to me. But I think uh, the design idea is like really cool. And I think he's captured it pretty well. So part of it is spending a bit more time looking at the design and thinking how that works, not necessarily just the, the skills of like the stroke or anything like that but what's what's really trippy is that the skills of drawing are actually a lot more mental than you think they're not all just um just about actual physical drawing which is um yeah just one of those important things to start to realize about illustration or art or painting that not everything is is exactly what it seems to be and that a lot of the skills and capabilities actually come into design work rather than um, rather than the actual writing process itself so you could think of it like how in writing a lot of people might think good writing requires good grammar and sentence structure but ultimately the story is what's going to hold it so you have to um, be open to learning that that side of things rather than um, rather than only uh like oh i've got to learn grammar or something and that's actually one of the interesting parts of learning anything is learning kind of the surprising things that you have to learn um i'm, I'm just adding like beveled edges on this and i'm making it brighter because i don't know it just makes it seem like there's a reflection or something makes it maybe seem a little bit more intentional uh, it's still not a very good color design I'd have to think about the color design to be honest it's probably something I'll do fairly soon is look into like color design and, and stuff but let's say that's okay um i just want to add some smaller super red stuff just as accents Most people watching will have uh, ton, tons of ideas for things like this and yeah you can just implement them or whatever so uh, but yeah okay so what is this green and whatever maybe sort of cyan blue make that light let's let's see if this works color theory is like that's complementary colors right let's see if 
this cool and warm color mixture does anything. <laughs> maybe, maybe it does. Now I'm just going to do some abstract, random stuff. Like I don't fully know what I'm doing. Mm, no, that's way too dark. Maybe I add like purple or something. <laughs> it's trippy. It's trippy. Um, But who knows, maybe it gives like some impact or a punch or something, I don't know. Maybe if I create like some smaller lines on here, these yellows come off as like ambient light reflection, that'd be cool. Yeah, cool, whatever. Um, so that's enough for now um, as just a sort of silly overdraw. I really need to learn some color theory. But there we go. Um, yeah, uh, just sit down and enhance something that you've drawn and it doesn't take too much. And the process can just be interesting and stimulating and, and, and fun, random. So what most people will be doing is they'll be thinking about, uh, like, is what they're doing correct? And you just want to get away from that mentality as much as possible and get into the mentality of just being able to put things down, erase them, put things down, erase them and sort of flowing and allowing the design itself to um, to be the major guiding point of what's correct versus not correct. And make sure your stroke lines are strong enough to represent like a rhythm or a flow. Uh, what just happened there? I don't know. I think it's because there's stuff on top. Oh, okay. So here's the original design. I didn't see that before. 
um, that he was drawing from. Um, so that's uh, quite quite a design. So it's got like um, almost AI like feathers in that design. There's more swoosh and swirl. Mm. Way more dynamic. So like this, this element is actually coming out like this and then whipping back down like this uh, while this is coming like this. And this is creating like a hook hook pattern and this one's actually like mounded over like this which kind of implies it's coming forward or towards the camera and then there's this going across like this um, so you'd want to capture like this and maybe this and it also has some interesting things here with like these circles and stuff to make it like more interesting, like a peacock's tail. Mm, that's probably what it's based off of. Um, there's like a moon crescent thing. There's a little bit more structure to these wings. There is actually this flick here that Intuited would probably be there, but there's also a second flick. Um, and these wings, they do actually break out of this circle here, so they break out all the way up along here, which makes sense. So he he probably just missed that detail that it breaks through that far and then there it's actually very chaotic so i think for a beginner drawing something super chaotic like this is probably pretty tricky because you're trying to interpret what's what's even going on and that would be difficult to deal with. So I think he's done actually pretty decent job. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna merge those and then just <laughs> terrible, but you know, is an approximation all right Uh, so in this reference drawing, there's like a lot of longer strokes. Uh, so it creates a more elegance rather than sort of compact strokes. Um. I'm just going to create like a, a model of like uh, movement just to approximate some of the the feel that it has. Add a little bit more chaos in. Ba ba ba. Eight. 
and there's all kinds of like scales going on so how would I represent scales kind of like crisscross right And then and then there's just like literally feathers flying off. Like it's not actually a thick bird with a thick body it's just sort of flying off okay so here It has a smaller beak and a smaller face. Um, let's just go black. It has this underside of the what's happening. It has like almost these streaks that come across. Oi. Okay. What I'm doing right now is, while it doesn't look good, I'm just literally putting in something I call indicators, which is just idea of something that I may want to create the effect of so even if you don't quite get it right you can always just keep trying so I'm just trying to think of like what's going on like obviously you could just go through this and very specifically copy things, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. There's a thing of hair that comes off like this and these are actually really separate. This is actually much smaller than this, like the proportion. Uh, I've got to use a select tool. Bit of a rotation. <laughs> All right. Um, just blend away some mistakes. Whoa. Hello. Maybe not. Now nah, it looks like a chicken. I love it. Chicken.
Wow, I've made a real mess of this. It's, it's okay there. So one of the things that you do want to understand when you are drawing is um, it's actually f fine to make a mess. Um, if you know how to get out of it. This is interesting here. So I've randomly created this idea of like this top feather, this mid feather, and then this large feather. I really like that idea because it's a simplification. I'm gonna block that in somehow with like a red or something. Um, like there's this, and there's like this small feather, and then there's like this big feather that comes across like this. I really like that in the design. So I'm gonna try and keep keep that idea. Mm, there's also a design idea that comes off here and down here. And like a whip up across here. Okay, and there's also this idea of like this this viewing window thing on top of its head. Okay, cool. Let's just turn that into three. Don't need as much chaos as in as is in the the original. But just take some of the random design ideas. Up. And then Okay, so how do I fix this? I'm just going to go into some sort of abstract mode here. All right, so push. We know that there's going to be feathers, right? So just turn these into feathers. Ba ba ba. It's taking way longer than I thought it would. Okay. Um, I mean, originally I just thought, hey, I would just create like a, a silhouette and then just stick with that. Weirdly, I haven't. Okay, so maybe with these ones, they should be smaller. But you can probably just get away with making them like feathers. Don't need to make that scaly thing. OK. 
Okay. It's like some dark reds that streak streak through here. Streak around there. And along here. And also inside this. It's like this, it's like this. <laughs> and then there's darker reds on the outsides of these. Da -da -da. Okay, cool. That darker red, it's kind of added um, something called ambient occlusion, which gives it a little bit more pop. I know my version of it is incredibly, like, different, um, but I'm okay with that. So, okay, so I'll just add, like, a little thing here and a little thing here.
I should be thinking about this more, but uh, <laughs> I uh, kind of don't care anymore. Um, okay, so... How do we add some smoothness into all of this? Okay, what's this like? A sort of red. I'm just gonna get rid of some of these weird smudgy colors. It was black and gray. Just get rid of those. Okay, cool, and then get rid of some of that smudginess. Cool. I am going for like a looser design here. It's kind of what I mean by like not copying one for one. Uh, with things. Mm. Like if you can learn to just do things with not one-to-one -one copies, it's, I don't know, there's something, something about that that's quite nice. Okay, uh, you will have seen me just be doing quite a few different random things during this whole period of like the last 20, 30 minutes. Um, that's me just using kind of strokes uh, to create indicators, um, which is a more intermediate thing to be able to do. Uh, it's not something you should expect to do as a beginner. Um, you should just only really be able to kind of just enhance um, your design a bit and use pretty much the same capabilities you were using before, but maybe with like more idea of like the stroke, keeping the stroke nice, nice and loose and uh, clean. I'm just uh, adding some like accents here of like breaking some symmetry up and, and stuff like that. Just to make everything 
more clearly intentional. Which will just make it seem less like random. Um, like, oh, it's just loose on purpose. Uh, that's what we're trying to get the idea of. Like, oh, it is loose on purpose. It is meant to be loose. Okay, cool. Um, here, I'm doing some leading lines as well. That lead to where we want, which is this phoenix. Um, maybe I'll even like do some across the star itself. Oh. Something like that. Uh, what do we want to do with this mm, thingy? Mm. You can always do blending to make things smoother. Mm. I'm not sure if it's a good idea, but we could try it. So just Just try to remove some rough edges. So you see like the little parts of the paintbrush, which is kind of being rough. If you blend those areas, it should smooth out like the the texture that, that's come from that. Mm. So if you're strategic about what specific thing you're, you're blending, blending out rather than just blending randomly, Okay. Blending is very similar to blurring things, so it's like don't pay attention to this part. And it makes things closer together, so that kind of like smooths them out. That might not be what you want. You might want things to specifically contrast, so you just yeah. Like these darker lines, I want them to contrast. Maybe I'll just remove some of the scratchiness inside these. Some of the scratchiness I like, so try to keep that. All right, does this work? Kind of. Blend this a bit, blend that a bit, blend this a bit, blend that a bit. Okay, cool. It's pretty close. Um, whoop. Not with the blending brush. Let's try with the round brush.
I accidentally removed the uh, the white there and it kind of like detracted. So do that. Maybe I'll add like this clearer yellow behind the head and along the outline of the face. Make it silhouette pop a little more. Bop, bop, bop. Um, and then what do we do with this purple? We can use a darker purple. Magenta works. It's magenta go. <laughs> uh, so random. Okay, cool. Um, All right, um, I'm kind of thinking of like doing something at this heart section of the thing. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe I'll just use like a G pen and just. And just. I could, of course, use a layer, a specific layer, and I could add some sort of thing. Let's do that. Is that a layer? And what is it? Add glow? It's probably going to be too bright. Maybe I've just completely destroyed it here. Whatever. That'll do. Cool. <laughs> well, there we go. There's a, a random design that's connected. Um, and where is his original? Or is it? Is it here? Or is it here? It's probably this one. There we go. And so just transforming
Here's one, which is a symbol uh, into something a bit more painterly. But uh, there we go. And as you can see, just with the circle, he was actually really close. Um, themes of stars. Uh, I mean, I didn't really solve that question, did I? <laughs> but um, there's something in there as a composition, I guess, compositional idea. Um, and then just taking a little bit more inspiration from the reference, not necessarily having to copy it because the way that that was done is actually kind of highly rendered. And it's rendered in a way that made me kind of think it was like AI art. It might not be, but uh, it's kind of like, it's just using very specific gradients. Um, but hey, um, or at least it's a little bit modified with AI art, but, um, or it might seem that way anyway. But uh, yeah, there you, there you go. Um, here is the kind of it, my iteration and yeah, Phoenix. Uh, so cheers to my friend for providing this interesting little picture and then, uh, and then also giving me the reference as well. So we could take a look and just kind of play around with it. So originally you saw the kind of just taking directly from this and then then sort of changing up some of the ideas, taking a little bit more inspiration from the actual piece and also making it a little bit different. And there we go. All right, I uh, hope, hope everyone enjoyed that and uh, take care. Bye.